Jesus, we just praise you in this place this morning. Truly nothing more beautiful. Lord, I just pray that you're pleased with our worship to you. That God, we're not just showing up to show up on a Sunday. That God, we just come here just dive deep into your word and just have that hunger to want you more. We have that desire to know you more. That you're not just a checklist. God, that you're every moment of every day. Jesus, there's truly no one greater, no one more powerful. would be an offering to you and the things that we say and the things that we do Jesus we just love you and for those of us who are trying to figure out what this Jesus thing is God I just pray that you open their hearts that they realize that you are for them pray that you bless each and every person all over this place. God, keep them safe. Break open the shells that they might have. God, that they would just be ready to receive from you the word that you have for them. I thank you for this church and all the members that make this body up. God, I just pray that we continue to push one another to be better children of Christ. We thank you for meeting us in this place this morning. And it's in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, good morning, church. Happy Sunday. So glad to see you guys. Go ahead and say hi to somebody. church. It is great to see you. Thank you for being here and worshiping with us today. Uh, just have a few announcements we want to go over before we continue on uh, with our service today. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, today, after the service, is 55 and up. Uh, they meet in the uh, CGS Kids Church Room. Uh, they have a potluck. They have a time of fellowship, time of uh, just really uh, learning in God's Word together. And uh, if you did not sign up for that, that's okay. There's always plenty of food. So uh, we'd love to invite you to, to join them uh, for 55 and up uh, right after church today. Uh, if you're not familiar with the CGS Kids Church Room is, if you just take this, these doors and you just walk straight ahead to you can't walk anymore. That is where the CGS Kids Church room is. Uh, this coming Wednesday is Point Man Youth Ministry. Uh, we just want a reminder that family night is done for the summer. Uh, we're taking a little break, letting uh, all of our leaders uh, take some time off during the summer. Uh, the Point Man Youth, we will continue to run uh, every Wednesday until camp with the exception of the week of Vacation Bible School. Uh, most of our students or many of our students help with Vacation Bible School and, and so we will take that week off. Uh, along with uh, youth ministry is we want to remind our students that Impact Summer Camp is coming up July 12th through 15th. Uh, there are still spots available if you are interested in going to camp this year. Uh, we are looking forward to it. I think we have 35 students so far that are signed up and ready to go, uh, but we would love to have even more go. So if you have any questions about that, I'd love to answer any questions that you might have about uh, Impact Summer Camp. It is going to be a great time. 
Uh, we are one week closer to Vacation Bible School. That is June 5th through 7th, and uh, a lot of things are happening uh, really this week and all the way through uh, through v, uh, VBS. Uh, so tomorrow, uh, tomorrow evening, there is a, a meeting for all the leaders. If you have signed up to be a volunteer for VBS, there is a meeting tomorrow evening at 6.30 in the CGS Kids Church Room. Uh, so we would love to have you come and be a part of that. Uh, on Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock, they are doing a painting party uh, just to get the scenery and the props and everything all looking just fantastic. Uh, if you are looking for something to do on Tuesday evening, uh, they could certainly use your help with that. Uh, they will also be meeting in the kids' room for that. And then uh, also, uh, we're looking for some uh, food donations. We love to do snack time during Vacation Bible School, and so we're looking for all different kinds of snacks. Uh, so you could bring in uh, cups of yogurt, applesauce, crackers. You can bake cookies if you like baking. You can buy cookies if you would rather to buy cookies. Uh, I would... I would buy cookies, and your kids would appreciate that. So, uh, But you can do whatever works for you. Uh, you can sign up for that at the Vacation Bible School table out in the foyer after the service today. Um, you know, th we're, we're planning and praying and believing for a lot of kids, so it's going to take a lot of snacks to make this happen. So uh, if that's something that you would love to help out with, uh, that is greatly appreciated as well. Uh, we're going to take up our offering today, and... Uh, uh, a couple different ways that that looks. Today, uh, if you go to the back, if you usually give in the baskets in the back, there are two baskets back there today that we want to let you know about. Uh, the one is the normal offering basket. That will be on your left-hand side. Uh, today, we have a guest speaker. Uh, uh, Bishop George is here from Kenya, and he's going to be here to share. Uh, we want to bless him today as well. So on the right side is another basket. If you would love to, to help sponsor uh, past, uh, Bishop George while he is here, uh, we would just love to encourage you to do that today. So his uh, offering basket will be on the right side, and uh, we'll go over more of that information a, a little bit later as well. But uh, several different ways you can give in the back, as always. You can also download the Church Center app on any smartphone. Uh, you can uh, text 84321. You can text to give, or you can go to the church website, cgs.church, and you can click on the giving tab at any time. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you so much for who you are. God, we thank you for the beautiful weather that you've blessed us with. God, you've given us so much. And God, because you've done so much for us, God, we love to give back to you, to say thank you for your many blessings. So God, as we give back to you, God, we ask that you take these tithes and these offerings to use it to further your kingdom, to do your work all across the world. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning. It is good to see everyone. Thank you for being here and worshiping with us. If you're a guest here today, I want to welcome you as well. You're tuning in online. My name is Brad Keen. I'm the lead pastor. Uh, and as Pastor Jeremy said, there are a lot of great things. I think it's just, what, two weeks till Vacation Bible School. So uh, two weeks till it's here. It's a lot of great things going on. Uh, last I heard, I think there was like over 45 kids already pre-registered. Uh, so looking to be a great Vacation Bible School year. So just keep praying for that. And again, would love to have you guys come out on Monday night if you're volunteering and Tuesday night to, to help uh, get the, the stage design uh, ready to go as well. Well, we have a number of great things happening this morning. Bishop George is here. I'll introduce him in a little bit. Uh, it's also our graduation Sunday. We're going to celebrate our graduates here in just a few minutes. Uh, so let's open our service in prayer and, uh, and then looking forward to honoring our graduates. So Heavenly Father, we come before you and God, we are thankful for this day. God, the day that you've made this beautiful uh, warm, uh, sunny Sunday morning. God, we are thankful for the chance to gather as a church body, as a church family, God, and worship you uh, and encourage each other, Father God, and learn and grow. And God, we pray now that you just open our ears to hear all that you have for us. And, and uh, God, we give you thanks and praise for this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we have three graduates uh, this morning, and so we're going to invite you guys uh, to come on up here and, and uh, come up here on stage with us. And so I want to invite Joey Gutekunst to come up here. I uh, want to invite Matthew Borsos, and we want to invite Zachary Hartman. If you guys would join us up on stage here, we'll step up here so we can all fit. Pastor Jeremy's going to come as well here. You can start down there if you want. We're just going to... Uh, Give you guys a microphone and uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Introduce yourselves to us. We have some great pictures that your parents sent in uh, behind, uh, a graduation picture, and one when you guys were just little tykes. 
And uh, so that's going to scroll while we're talking. But just tell us a little bit about yourself, your name, and, and maybe what you're going to do after school and, and uh, go on from there. Hi, I'm uh, Zach Hartman. I'm graduating from uh, Bowling Green High School, and I'm planning to go to um, Kent State University to major in mechatronics engineering. Wow. Don't even know what that is. <laughs> <coughs> I'm Joey Gutekunst. Uh, I've been here for a very long time. You probably never saw me. I'm always stuck in the booth back there. <laughs> um, I'm graduating from Elmwood, and I'm planning on going into the workforce uh, for welding. Excellent. Excellent. I'm Matthew Borsos. Uh, I'm graduating from Elmwood High School, and I'm going to Bowling Green State University for psychology. Excellent. Nice beard, too, by the way. <laughs> All right. We'll head that back down to Pastor Jeremy there. Well, we have a, just excited for these young men and just the future that God has, has for them. And uh, they have some great plans for their future. And I know that God has plans as well for them. And so just excited to see them, whether they're, you know, going into the workforce right away. That's a great field welding. Uh, or going on and, and getting their degrees. Know that God's going to use them for his purpose and glory. And uh, you guys have just been a blessing and been glad to have you guys here. Uh, as part of our church family. Some of you have been here forever, and some of you are, are newer to the church family, but we look forward to you continuing on uh, You know, while you're here. If you're away at school, look forward to you coming back and, and uh, serving. For those of you guys that are, that are here, hope to uh, continue seeing you guys and uh, know you're part of the church. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, and God, we are so thankful for these graduates. God, we're thankful that you brought them here to us. And uh, God, we pray that you would just lead and guide and direct their steps in the, the days and weeks and months and years ahead. God, that you would use them for your purpose, that you would use them for your glory. God, that they would be uh, a beacon of light, God, on their college campuses. God, that they'd be a beacon of light uh, in the workforce. God, that you would use them uh, to tell other people about you. Uh, God, careers are great, and uh, it's how we provide for ourselves and our families one day. But God, our calling as your people is to tell other people about you. And uh, God, that's who, what we're called to do. We're called to glorify you with our lives. So God, pray that these young men would glorify you in their lives and with their lives. And God, that um, they would always seek you, that they would always seek your direction. And uh, God, that you just go before them now and you prepare the way for them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we thank you for these seniors. Father God, I pray that you bless each one of them. Father God, as they finish this chapter of their life and as they open up the next chapter, God, I pray that you would protect their hearts, that you protect their minds. God, that they would continue to, to grow in you, Father God, that they would trust you, Lord, that they would continue to learn to, to lean on you and to listen for your voice. Father God, I pray that you would uh, just bless them, God, in the next steps that they take, Father God. We thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you guys. Let's give them one more round of applause. So I think this is two graduating classes in a row that have been all guys. So um, I know we get into girls next year, at least one, because I have one daughter graduating, but I don't know. Uh, do we have girls in the youth group, right? Girl? All right, all right. well, hey, the guys are graduating, so that's good. So anyways, uh, great uh, to honor and celebrate uh, our graduates. We do. We honor you guys and, and appreciate you. Well, Bishop George is here from Kenya, and so I'm going to ask him to come here uh, in just a minute. Uh, he has become a good friend over the years. I went and picked him up on Friday down in Mansfield, and he spent the last couple of days uh, with us in, in our home, and it's just always a blessing to sit uh, and, and talk with him. Uh, you know, he actually watches our services uh, pretty much every week, and, uh, you know, we've been talking at dinner and at lunch and, and uh, in the car, and he'll ask certain things, and I'll answer questions, and then I'll tell him something. He goes, yes, pastor, I know. I'm part of your church. And uh, I watch all the time. So uh, he is, he's watching online and, and knows what we're doing here and loves our church. Uh, he's a bishop. Uh, he's a pastor. He's a bishop because he has 84 churches in Kenya that he oversees. And we were talking uh, last night at dinner and, 
in their church planting that they are doing, they are expecting to have 89 churches uh, by the end of the year. And so God is just uh, using him. He has very, very good English. Uh, let your ears adjust, and I think you'll be able to understand him really, really well. Uh, he has very, very good English. I know you're going to be blessed this morning and that you're going to enjoy him. And then we're going to take up an offering for him uh, at the end of the service. So he is used to like three-hour-long services. Uh, so I told him, that's fine. No, I didn't. Um, so anyways, uh, he does, he, he's uh, uh, just a, a great friend and brother, and he's got a great word for us today. So we give Bishop George a warm welcome as he comes this morning, please. It's not my first time to be here and to fellowship in this church. I want to thank uh, Pastor Brad for bringing me back again to stand before you good people. I was here last in 2018. I uh, attended the assembly here in 2018. I was accommodated by good friends. And last year I wanted to come back again because I was told that the assembly was being hosted here. But uh, there were some challenges. Uh, as you know, we do a lot of outreach, open air meetings and uh, Back home, we call them crusades. So one time, I was doing a crusade, and all of a sudden, I had my left limb swollen. And uh, it became a big challenge. After that, my visa also expired. I had to renew that visa. So last year, I had to let it go because of... Uh, my <clears throat> uh, health challenge just then. But this year I said, even if the assembly is in uh, North Carolina, but I have to come and see my good friend, Pastor Brad. So I want to thank God for this very day. I receive greetings from my wife, Mary. Uh, we have uh, four children, two boys and uh, two girls. And three weeks ago, our eldest son got married. So now my family is getting bigger and bigger. I've become a father-in-law now. And I'm grateful uh, for that. Well, as uh, he said, uh, back home, uh, we do marathon preaching. As you know, Kenya is very good in marathon. <laughs> so even in church, we do marathon preaching. But uh, we have the grace back home that... Uh, uh, we also have marathon laziness. They can also sit and sit and sit listening to you. But when we come over here, we know it is hit and run. <laughs> and uh, that is what I'm going to do this morning. <laughs> Just to hit and run. Because I know there is a program after this. There are many things to do after this. I've had some, there are some potluck, and I don't know that is a program for the day. So I want us to get to the Word of God. Now, many things have happened within five years. I was here. Um... We passed through so many challenges during the COVID-19. And back home, we were hit very hard. But I thank God the church survived. 
Even though some churches closed down during the COVID-19, and also we lost some members who are not very much committed to the things of God. You know, sometimes when the shaking comes, the shakeable are being shaken, but they must be remnants. People who cannot be shaken, whatever circumstances. So when COVID-19 came, the church was greatly shaken because there was a lockdown for over two years. No going to church, over two years. And those who were made to sit in their homes and were told to have church services in their homes, which some tried and it was not so that very easy. You know, there is a reason why God has put a shepherd over the flock. There is a reason. There is a reason why I need a pastor. There is a reason why you need a pastor. And we cannot use circumstances and situations that come our way to alter the program of God and what God has put in place for our well-being. Especially spiritually, there are things you cannot turn around. There are things that you must go according to the will of God and according to the way God wants them to go. So we are grateful that we have survived that weather, even though they are saying that it is still there, but this far we have reached, we need to give God the glory because he has taken us through those challenges and we have, uh, we had uh, uh, more churches, but during corona, corona or COVID-19, some churches closed down. And that's why today I want to talk to us on the strong foundation that a believer can lay so that when storms come, when shaking comes, they can withstand the shaking and the storms. I know that even American church was not spared, spared either. They were not spared. I know the American church also went through those uh, storms and the shaking during COVID-19. Now we are reading the book of uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse number 24. I like it in the book of Matthew even though Luke also echoed the same, but in Matthew, I love it because it brings the real, real picture of foundation laying. Verse 24, my Bible says I have the King James translation here. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and do it them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which build his house upon a rock, and the rain descend, and the flood came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Verse number 26, and every one that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not shall be likened as a foolish man which built his house upon the sun. And the rain descended and the flood came and the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell. And the great was, great was the fall of it. Uh, may God help us as we 
uh, hear this word today. Now, Jesus talked about two, gro uh, two groups of people. And these groups, all of them heard the word. All of them, this other group and this other group, they heard the word. And Jesus said, and whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and do them. It is very easy for us to come on a Sunday service like this. The reason being, we are coming to hear what God says. The word of God. All of us, we are sent this morning to hear the word of God. And Jesus is saying, this, this first group, those who hear the word, and after that, they put it into practice. They do the word that they have heard. He said, this one, I will liken them to a wise people. So where is wisdom here? Jesus explained on the same scripture. Where is wisdom? Wisdom will tell you before you lay the foundation that it will rain. Wisdom will tell you before you lay the foundation that there will be erosion. I don't know whether that English uh, makes sense. There will be erosion. When it rains, the flood erodes the soil and takes it down the stream when it rains. So wisdom, before you lay this foundation, wisdom will tell you that there will be erosion. Wisdom will tell you that after erosion, there will be a storm. And the storm will hit on the building. And if the building is not founded on the strong foundation, that building will fall. But if it is founded on the strong foundation then that building will weather the storm. So he's talking about the foolish people and the wise people. Where is wisdom coming? He's saying that if you hear the sayings of mine, if you hear what I'm telling you and do them, you are wise. Because it will withstand the test of time. Anything that does not withstand the test of time, it is something that its foundation was not very solid and was not very strong. Now many of us, we get affected in life because we are not applying the wisdom that has been given in the word of God. We do not practice and we do not take time to lay the strong foundation for the storms which are to come for the future. We have so many things. When we come to church, there are so many storms that have affected our lives. There are many storms in marriage. There are many storms in families. There are many storms at our places of work. There are many storms in changes of life. But believers, we need to be so wise that we can see what is going to happen in the future. That is wisdom. We don't just 
lay our foundation for today. We don't just casually work on this life. As Bishop George, I thank God I have a family. And right now, I'm not working on myself. I'm working on the future of my family. I want to see the life of my son in the future. The life of my daughter in the future. And if I'm using the wisdom of the word of God, I need to lay the foundation for their future. Many, of ta- many times, some of us, we are broken because of the storms that has hit on our relationships, it has hit on our families, it has hit on our children, until when you sit back to reflect where you have come from and where you are going, you lose hope in life. God has not called us to be hopeless. I always tell the people that don't sit next to somebody who has lost hope because they are infectious. Somebody who has lost hope may not work on anything. Somebody who has lost hope becomes lazy. They said, whatever comes, I am here. But somebody who has hope works for the future. He works for tomorrow. And that's why me as a bishop back home in Kenya, I know some of us, some of my people are watching because I've already linked uh, this live broadcast uh, to my Facebook page, and I believe some people are watching back home. It is late, it may be seven, it is six in the evening, right now home. It is six in the evening, so the, my, my church members are back home, so most of them maybe are watching me live. But I always tell people that God, Christ in you, is the hope of glory. Why? Because when God comes into your life, he comes into your system. There is one reason why God comes into your life. So that he may glorify himself in your life. God comes into your situation. God comes into your issues. So that he may glorify himself in your issues. That is why God comes in. God has called you, not that because you are better than those who are alcoholic and those who are uh, uh, addicted on other things, those who are outside God. You are not better than them. But God came into your life that he may glorify himself in your life. So when you hear his word, you have to lay a strong foundation For what you have heard. So many of us, we hear the word of God and we say, no God, that one, mm -mm, not for me. That one, not for me, God. That one. There are people who struggle with God. Because they think that God demands too much from them. They think that God is not fair. Is demanding a lot. For them. But let me tell you, God wants everything. And that's why He said, You love me with all your heart. You love me with all your soul. You love me with all your strength. You love me with all. God wants all, He doesn't want three quarters. He wants everything of you. We need to surrender to God. If you don't know for, uh, us from Africa, we'll let you know how to give everything to God. Whenever we come to church, 
and you're believing God for something, in Africa, when you are sick, you come to be prayed for, you tell God, you heal me or I die. Because not all people have uh, insurance cover for help. Not everybody. Only those who are in employment, only those who work with government, only those who are... But a bigger percentage of people that goes to church, they go to church because God is everything to them. So when they are prayed for, and that's why you see in our meetings in Africa, there are miracles because somebody has come to take all of God. He has come for everything. He doesn't have an insurance cover. He doesn't have credit cards. They don't have all those things. They come for God. Somebody comes and tells God, if I will not have supper tonight, if I will not have dinner tonight, then God, if you will not give me dinner tonight, then God does it. I will go without it. They focus on God. And that's why he said, if you hear these things of mine and do them, you are wise. Because you are future focused. Wisdom is not short-sighted. Wisdom is facing the future by faith. You have to live by faith. And what is faith? Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Faith is not for today. Faith is for tomorrow. Because tomorrow is entirely in God's hands. Tomorrow is not in my hand. Tomorrow is not in your hands. You don't know what tomorrow will bring forth. And that's why we face tomorrow by faith. Okay, can we put our hands together for the glory of his name? And in the book of Hebrews chapter 6 and ver chapter 11 verse number 6, it says, for without faith it is impossible to please God. When we have faith, we live to please God. When we have faith, we come to church. By faith, we are coming to please God. What will happen when you please God? God will re release divine security upon your life. When your faith pleases God, God will release divine healing upon your life. These things happen when God is pleased with you. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. It is impossible to please God. So when you come to him, the Bible says, you must believe that God is. And that he is a rewarder of them that Seek him diligently. When you seek the Lord diligently, you come and you say, God, I surrender to you. You are my God. I surrender my family to you. I surrender my marriage to you. It is not all about me. It is all about you. I surrender my children to you. Surrender everything. Even if they are rebellious, continue surrendering them to God. Let me tell you, God will surprise you. His word will come to pass. I surrender to you, God. Are we there? So, the foolish ones are people who hear and they take it for granted. People who hear 
and said, I know this is our, uh, our, uh, our bishop. That is the way he talks. I know that that was just him talking. Let me tell you, when the word of God comes and you came for it, it doesn't matter who God uses to bring the word. He doesn't matter. The word of God can come in a very simple way and you may think it is normal that way. You may think it is usual that way. Yet God is speaking to you. He's speaking to you. There was one soldier in the Bible. Let me uh, begin to wrap up because it is hit and run. This man was called Naaman. Naaman was a mighty man. He was a respected man. And one day they took a slave from Israel to their home. And this man had issue. He was a leper. But by bringing a Jewish maid in his house, this maid was just there, working in the house, going in the kitchen, doing dishes with the, with, with, with the Naaman's wife. And one day this maid spoke to the wife of Naaman and said, I would that my master may go to Israel because there is a prophet in Israel. This leprosy is nothing. It can end. You know what leprosy is? And this was a maid, a slave girl, talking. Let me tell you, when God wants to do something in your life, he will come in a very simple way. He may come through a bishop from uh, Africa just to be here and stand before you for 30 minutes, yet God has sent him to speak a word into your life. Yet God has seen a situation, an issue that you are struggling with. And he has sent this black man from Kenya just to come and stand before you. Just to speak a word before you. Because the word of God has come. And the Bible says, I will send my word to heal them. The word of God will not come down and go back to him void. It must accomplish the, the purpose of which it has been sent. Amen. So when the word comes, you need to be a doer of the word. There are some things we need to drop. We need to drop pride. We need to drop the way we listen to the word of God. Sometimes we pause uh, 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 with pride the time we are listening to the word of God. There are things that we need to drop for God to work in our lives. If you become a doer of the word of God, you will be wise. The storms will come and heat on your building, but the foundation, it will find that the foundation was dug deep to the rock and it was laid strong. The, that house will never fall. On the foundation of the word of God, I want to promise you and I want to tell you that God will not disappoint you. You will never be disappointed. Things may be running out of hands. Things may, things may not be working for you. Things may not be on your side. You are seeing everything is crumbling down. Everything is going against your wishes. Let me tell you, God, when God is in control, God will send his word. He will send his word. And when you become a doer of the word, God will do his will. In your life. Before I close. I just feel in my spirit. In these few minutes. There is an issue that you have struggled with. There is something that uh, you see. It is not working for you. 
There are some secrets that you don't want even your friends to know. There are some things that are happening in your life that you don't want even your pastor to know that you're going through such. Bishop George is a human being, but you have a bigger God. That God can stand by you. That God can fight, fight your battle. And let me tell you, his promises are yeah and amen. The Bible says, let all men be liars. Men can be liars, but God is a faithful God. When you become a doer of the word, God will stand by you. God will not deny his word. God will not disappoint you. God will stand by you. I want to pray. If you feel that you can come to the altar for this prayer, just feel free. Just walk to the altar. God can do something in these few minutes. God is able to do something. You can just humble yourself. Maybe it is an issue that has been prayed for many years. God can just do it like this in this service. If you just feel you can come to the altar, that God may touch your life, you're free to come to the altar as I make this prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you this morning because God, you are God. And you're not a son of man that you lie. Jehovah God, your promises are yeah and amen. I've delivered your word and I pray this morning that this word may have room in the heart of somebody. This word may have room in somebody's life. This word, oh God, may penetrate to meet an issue in somebody's life. Thank you, Father, even for the sister who has come to the altar. I commit her before you. I lift her issues before you, oh God. I pray, oh dear loving Father, that you relieve her from any burden the enemy has put upon her life. I pray, O oh Jehovah God, that the anointing this morning may break every yoke of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I want to pray for families. I want to pray for children of believers. I want to pray for marriages. King of glory, there's nothing to hurt for you. And with this drop, Jehovah God, you're able to do your will in people's lives. We thank you. We bless you. Giving you praise and honor in Jesus' name. And all of us, we say, amen. God bless you so much. Uh, we are heading to North Carolina for the assembly uh, next month. And uh, I thank God because I've been asked to talk about uh, church planting at the assembly. So by the grace of God, I'll be having a workshop down there, talk about church planting. So those who will be going there, Let's meet down there at the assembly. May God bless you so much. I love you all. Thank you, Pastor. What a powerful word, amen? A uh, great word for us, and uh, thank you for coming and, and sharing that today. There will be prayer teams down here after the service, and uh, Bishop will be here as well. I mean, he can't go anywhere unless we take him somewhere. So he'll be here to pray. Uh, he'll be here to pray as well. So if you'd like someone to uh, pray with you after the service, 
uh, please come down front. We would, uh, we'd love to, love to be able to do that. Uh, we want to honor him at this time, and like I said, we're going to take up a love offering for him, and so there are baskets in the back, so they are just the, the brown wicker baskets, uh, not the one with the white liner in them, so that is, uh, that is where you can put an offering in as, as you walk out today if you want to bless uh, Bishop and his ministry, and uh, just to help him with all the different churches that they are ministering to and they are pastoring, and so again, we thank you for coming. Uh, last night we sat around at dinner and he kept telling me all night long, when are you coming to Africa? Are you coming this fall? I don't know if I can come this fall. It's pretty quick. How about next spring? So uh, he, is, uh, he is looking to looking to have us have a trip over there at some point. So uh, we'll see what God does with that. I told him that we would pray about that. But uh, uh, just a, a great man of God. And, uh, and uh, again, we just pray for bishops. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, our brother in the Lord, Bishop George. God, we pray that you continue to use him uh, in mighty ways. God, we thank you for the word that was spoken today, God, that it would, that it would uh, be, pl- that was planted, God, that it would take root, uh, God, that it would grow, God, that it would uh, affect us individually and, and corporately as a, as a church family as well, God, that we would be rooted and grounded in you, that our foundation is solid, so when the the storms of life come, Father God, that we would not be shaken, but God, that we would rise uh, to the top in those moments, God, that we would continue to, uh, to, to serve you and to pursue after you, God, that we would love you with all of our hearts more than all the things of this world. And uh, so, God, we pray for him, for his ministry, for his travels, uh, for all the different churches that he's going to speak in in the next month until the, the Harvest Network Assembly and in Charlotte, God, so we just pray for that. We pray for him, and uh, God, that you just go before him. And we ask that you would bless the offerings that are given today, uh, God, that they would bear much fruit in his ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, God bless you. Remember uh, the VBS stuff coming up this week, uh, leaders meeting tomorrow night, uh, doing painting, uh, prop, set design stuff on Tuesday night, uh, all hands on deck. Whoever can help with that, we would, we would love... Uh, Love for you to help with that and uh, continue to sign up. Uh, kids, grandkids, let, your, uh, let uh, other family members and, and relatives and neighbors know what God is doing, that VBS is coming up. Well, God bless you. Thank you for being here. Again, prayer teams will be up here. Have a great week. Go in peace.